Okay, this is just a quick demo on how to do the outside of the cube. And um, for it, um, you're going to need your two pages from the uh, handout, the one that shows the cross-section along the median of the cube, and the one that, cross that uh, shows the uh, cross-section along the diagonal. And actually, it is more useful for the inside uh, than the outside. But so we'll put that aside for a moment. And on this one, it's a little mess messy already, but what you can do is use the uh, square uh, on the left side, which shows how the section goes through the median and then down. And you can double that figure up as your master section. Okay. So what you want to do, and this is one way of doing it. I mean, you could draw everything from scratch, but one way of doing your um, template for the outside, which would look something like this, um, would be to completely draw it from scratch at full scale or make yourself again a, a little master. So I'm going to show how to do that. Uh, so what I did, I took a cube, um, or rather, um, so this is the section that I'm selected, right? That's your section. And I traced it. Okay, exactly. And I used this uh, vellum paper, which we have some of here. Uh, it's better than tracing. It's a little more denser, so you can't see it as much through, especially in dark colors. And if that happens, you can use tracing paper. Otherwise, the vellum is better. So you trace your master section like this. Okay, and you have to be really precise at this point because even though it's rough and even though we're going to use uh, scotch tape, the dimensions really have to be very precise still. Okay, So you do this and you have your master now on vellum. Now what I did is I made myself a little copy at 50% so I can show you here on the, uh, on the table, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to fit. Okay, So let's assume now that's my master um, at 4 inches by 4 inches. Okay. Um, so what I can do now is take a push pin again. Push pins are really great. Uh, make sure it's very sharp by touching it. And if you feel it's really sharp, that's good. If not, take another one. Um, now using that, I can mark it and then I go back and, and, and draw everything. Now before I do that, to avoid doing my squares, one like this, one a little bit at an angle, the other a little bit at an angle, I'm going to draw a master line on my page, on my board. Okay. So, oops. Thank you. Um, so now what I can do is, when I move my square along that line, I know that you know, I can be precise. Without that guide, I could be going a little bit like this, a little bit like that, which wouldn't be so good. Okay, so I'll just quickly do that now. And again, I'm doing it quickly for you know editing reasons, but you shouldn't rush it. Um, so I line up my uh, base, and I just and make sure you have either like extra layers of paper underneath or a soft. Uh, maybe a piece of board or something. Okay. Now what happens when I lift this up, it's really hard to see, right? I can't even see it. So what I do sometimes is I just make myself little marks to tell me where my spots are. Okay? Looks like little birds flying around. Uh, you can kind of see them. And I draw my first one. Now, even though I'm using that system to be absolutely sure or double check, I can also still use two triangles or my T-square. And since this happens to be now nice and straight, I'm going to do that because it's going to save me time. And when I mark my lines now, I can hear the pencil dipping into the little holes that I made. So that's a good sign that I'm actually hitting the right corners. You may 
might say, well, what's the trouble of going with the push pin if you're going to use your T-square? I don't know. It's just, you know, insurance. <laughs> Makes me feel better. Okay. So that's almost my first one. Now, this other line is at a weird angle, so I have to do it uh, freehand, sort of. Okay, so that's my first square. Now, remember, the others are just the flipping of this second one. So, I go like this, okay? Um, now, let me just show you a quick trick. If sometimes you can't quite see if something is lining up on top of the other, you can use what I call the persistence of vision trick. And that is just like in a flip book, you can quickly go like this. To see if my, you know, my top paper is aligning with my bottom one, okay? And you can do that because the image stays for what, about a twentieth of a second in your retina before being substituted by the next one. So anyway, now I flip this. finish all these dots. Um, again, I'm going to do a little marking uh, here. In fact, I'm going to do a little cross so that I know where it is. Uh, so that I do my next one. And now I have to figure out the next one. It's going to go like that. You have your drawing, right, to go by, so you don't need to guess. So the push pin does have the advantage of being fast. And now I believe the last one is going to be like this. Just another flip. See, with all these movements, there's bound to be some, dip, you know, some variation there. So that's why when I now finish all the drawing, um, I still use my uh, T-square. Uh, I don't know, just again, makes me feel good. Um, it's, a, it's a way of double checking. So I'm just going to have to use alignment, aligning it separately. Okay. Hope I don't get lost. This one is a single line, I think. And now this is opposite. You have to really think in symmetries and patterns. Okay, great. So that's my template. Um, now I'm just going to quickly do my top and bottom if you have room. If not, you're going to have to do them separate.
was tempted to measure for a second, but then I realized, no, 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 I have to use my triangle to do my square. It's too short. I have to measure because my T-square is bumping against my lights here. So. And I can just use two triangles instead of the T-square. Still pretty good. So that's the template. So now I just have a quick tip for the tabs. Okay. Um, you just need, on the left and right side, you just need them on one side because they're going to reconnect, right, together. And then you just need the top and bottom tabs of the three squares that don't have the lid um, because you just have three sides that you have to cover, right? So. Uh, oh yeah, one important thing is that when you do your tabs, you cut them at least at a 45 degree angle because otherwise they're going to overlap when you fold them. So you can do this, you can just quickly, and the tabs can be, you know, they don't have to be all the same size and things like that. It, it, it helps to do it, but it's not absolutely necessary since they're going to be hidden. Okay. So you can see I'm doing this at 45 degrees um, to prevent overlaps once I fold it. Because this part here is going to be split, I'm going to do a double tap, right, on the right side. Okay, um, that's it. So now I'm not going to demo this, but like I showed last week, uh, what you want to do is f do first all your scores, okay, so all the lines that get folded. Uh, just do a very light cut with a knife, okay, with your knife. Uh, once you do that, then do all your other cuts. Uh, this is not so crucial because, you know, that's going to be hidden, but these squares, yes, have to be precise, right? Um, and that's it, and then you're going to have your, your outside, okay? Uh, when you have your outside, um, eventually, uh, well, the, the rough cube we're going to do with tape, so it's easy. Um, you're going to be able to keep this open so it's easier to get inside. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop now and then I'll do another uh, demo in a few minutes on the inside. Okay.